Chorus is letting it out, you go free. because it's another episode of Iron Science Teacher. It's the last episode of 2019. I know, so let's enjoy this next hour as we have amazing teachers come out and give some amazing experiments. My name is obviously Jessica Sequins Parker, and I am the Director of Teaching and Learning here at the Exploratorium. I'm your host. We're broadcasting live, not only on Facebook. Do we love Facebook? But it's an awesome occurrence today because you know what? We are celebrating our 50th anniversary here at the Exploratorium. So that means it's our 50th birthday. Give it up. <laughs> I am feeling old. Thank you so much for helping us celebrate. So Iron Science Teacher, if you're not familiar, is based on the Japanese cooking show, Iron Chef. How many of you remember that? Yes, yes, you in the front row, it's okay. It's, it's on YouTube, you can find it. We're putting an exploratorium spin on this idea and having science teachers, amazing science teachers, five of them, actually cook up an incredible science experiment based on a secret ingredient right behind me. Ooh, yes, so they're gonna create an amazing classroom demo or a classroom experiment based on some ingredients behind here. Why do we do this? Because we love the science of everyday things and we love to applaud great teaching, don't we, audience? <laughs> All right. I should share, though, that the ingredient is secret to you, but not necessarily secret to our amazing teachers. But today's secret ingredient is inspired by the Exploratorium's 50th birthday. So, amazing audience, I have a request. I need your help. You all have the power today. Everyone in here has the power because you're going to determine the champion of the Iron Science Teacher Competition. By cheering and screaming and applauding your favorite teacher or teachers in their activity, you will determine who goes home as the two 2019 Iron Science Teacher Champion. Can you do it? Yes. All right, awesome. Let's meet our contestants today. They are science teachers spending three weeks, three weeks with us here at the Summer Institutes in a middle school and high school institute at the Exploratorium. First up is Tori Lang and Jared Morris. They, they're going to get close to me. Oh, yes. All right. Tell us, where do you teach and what do you teach? I teach middle school science in Memphis, Tennessee. Woo, give it up for Memphis, Tennessee. Jared, how about you? Where do you teach and what do you teach? I teach in Sacramento, and I teach middle school life science. Woo. Sacramento, awesome. All right, up next we have representing, here she comes, the Life Science Institute is Ajanta Day. All right, where do you teach and what do you teach? I teach at Oakland and I teach high school life sciences. Wonderful, okay. Batting third in this amazing lineup is Megan Ziegler. All right, talk to us. Where are you from and where do you teach? I teach in San Diego and I teach biology. Oh! San Diego. There's some bias here with the San Diego fan I see. All right, batting cleanup, here he comes. A native San Franciscan, Kendrick Chow. <laughs> Kendrick, are you really from San Francisco? I am, one of the few. Where do you teach and what do you teach? I teach chemistry at School of the Arts in San Francisco. Awesome! Okay, contestants, are you ready to reveal this week's secret ingredient? Okay, go ahead. Let's go back around. And audience, are you ready to reveal the secret ingredient? I don't, I don't know. It sounded like you were ready to leave. Are you ready for the secret ingredient? Here we go, folks. The secret ingredient today is birthday party supplies. We're having a birthday party here at the Exploratorium for our 50 years. And oh my God, the teachers are already grabbing their ingredients. They're ready to go. They're fighting. They were friends before this, but no longer. All right. 
Contestants, you are going to have five minutes to prep. Are you ready, contestants? On your mark, get ready. Make some science, go for it. Audience, as they start to prep, I want to let you know that we have teachers from around the world participating in the Summer Institute where they commit for three weeks to amazing science learning and, of course, teaching as well. How are the Summer Institutes going for these teachers? All right. Uh, middle school teachers, how are you feeling about Tori and Jared? Life science teachers, how are you feeling about Megan and Ajanta? And physical science and chemistry teachers, how do you feel about Kendrick? Yeah. Awesome. OK, let's see what they're up to. Let's check in with Tori and Jared. Uh, Tori grew up in San Mateo, but now teaches in Tennessee, while Jared, of course, is from the Sacramento area. They seem to be filling beakers full of soda. Soda, I guess. It, I'm not sure what's so interesting about the soda. We're going to find out, hopefully. They both love teaching middle school science because they love seeing students make sense of the world around them. Can they make sense of what's ha can we make sense of what's happening right here? I'm not, I am not totally sure. Some sort of soda setup. There's some water and a hot plate. And it looks like they have something in beakers here as well. Thank you so much, middle school, middle school science teachers. We're going to check in with you in a second. Next up is Ajanta. Ajanta, of course, works in Oakland, but is originally from India. She seems to be doing something with a balloon. Hmm. She loves science because she says, quote, science gives us life. Let's see what she's up to in terms of if she can take her knowledge of life science and actually try to compete for the title of Iron Science Teacher based on biology. And also, it looks like a party blower as well. Fascinating stuff there, Ajanta. Thank you so much. Let's move on over to Megan. Megan is from San Diego again, and she loves to teach high school biology because she loves that students can make sense of the world around them and where they are living based on biology. It looks like she's maybe taken that cupcake and put it into a Ziploc bag. I'm not sure why she's wasting the cupcake. It's a birthday party, and she's destroyed the cupcake. Um, yes, OK, now she's putting what looks like water into the bag. Fascinating stuff here for a biology teacher. Thank you so much, Megan. Hopefully, leave us some of that cupcake to eat later on. OK, good. Oh, and she said, go Padres. Sorry, Giants fans in the room. Kendrick, let's go over to Kendrick and see what he is up to, a native San Franciscan teaching chemistry in San Francisco. He is loving learning new things, he tells us. And he also says that he loves being proven wrong by his students. Today, though, he's trying to prove that he is right with the audience and earn that title of iron science teacher. He seems to have some balloons going, what looks like red food coloring. We're zooming in on something that seems to be black. I'm not sure what that is. And he has some beakers there with, I think, red food coloring and also blue food coloring. All right, and he's also wearing safety goggles. So safety first, folks. OK, contestants, let's give this folks some um, round of applause, please, here, audience. We're going to give them just a little bit more time to prep and get things situated um, as we are celebrating the happiest of birthdays here at the Exploratorium as we turn 50. So go ahead, and teachers, and start to wind down if you can. Audience, are you having fun here with the happy, happy birthday party in San Francisco? OK. We're also celebrating rainbows, as you can see. Those are very important. Do you love rainbows? Yeah. yeah. What's your name? John. It's not Rainbow John? No. No. But how much do you love rainbows? A lot. Do you love rainbows or science more? Which one do you like best? Science. Oh my gosh! That was totally a play out in the front row. That's amazing. Free membership for that family. Thank you so much. OK, here we go, folks. Audience, are you ready to crown our last champion of 2019 for Iron Science Teachers? Awesome. John's up in front. He's ready. So let's go ahead and bring up our contestants, Tori Lang and Jared Morris. Woo! All right, we got to transfer this.
over here. They are going to move to the middle here, and so we're just going to do a little bit. As you can see, we have a hot plate going on. Because that hot is hot, folks, we want to make sure we keep that there and safe. And so we're going to move a little bit to the middle and allow them some time because safety is always our first concern with science. And you can see Lori Lamerson is coming up and giving us some goggles as well. We always want to be safe here when doing science activities and experiments, and we want to make sure folks have the necessary ingredients to make that happen. And procedures. We, I also want to say that we are not trying to promote soda, and this is not, um, uh, yes. <laughs> Not a sponsorship. I mean, if, if these soda providers would like to support the Exploratorium, please feel free to reach out to me. But we're not, in fact, trying to promote them. Maybe. That'll work. Maybe. Okay. okay. Let's give it up again for Tori and Jared as they take it away for us. Well, thanks for coming to the, the birthday party with us. Woo! Happy 50th Exploratorium. Hey, Jared, you know, one of the things I love about birthday parties, especially growing up, is that I got to drink soda, so much soda. Didn't always get to, but during birthday parties, absolutely. And I've got these two soda cans here. We've got a ginger ale can and a diet ginger ale can. And it looks like, from what we can notice, we do a lot of noticing here at the Exploratorium, that they're about the same size. Sounds like... They're made out of the same thing. Looks like they're both green. They both say ginger ale on them. Lots of different things that we can notice, both up here and here at the Exploratorium. And one thing that I'm wondering is what's gonna happen if I put both of these cans of ginger ale and diet ginger ale into this tank of water? Let's find out. Wait. Whoa, what's happening? It looks like one of the cans has sunk down to the bottom of the water, and another can is floating. Looks like the regular ginger ale sinking down at the bottom, and the diet ginger ale has been put up to the top. Now, if you think that there's a hole in the can, no holes in the cans, you can see it's not actually leaking, or we can try it with these dry cans over here as well. Okay, same thing, still happening. Our normal ginger ale is going to sink, and our diet ginger ale is going to float. Now, how does that happen? Turns out that there's a property of matter called density, and density is what determines whether something sinks or whether something floats. Now, earlier when we were prepping, some of you saw us pouring those cans into these graduated cylinders. That's helping us to measure the volume, and what you can see both written on our cans and in these graduated cylinders is that we have 355 milliliters of soda in each can. That's how much space it takes up, that's the volume. So that's the same about these cans, but clearly something is different. And so what it turns out is that the mass, how much stuff there is in each can is actually different. And if we look at these balances up here, we can see that the mass, how much gravity is pulling that down as the weight, is actually different for normal, regular soda versus diet soda. And that difference comes in whether we have zero sugar or the 35 grams of sugar that come in our regular soda, versus our diet soda. So that sugar adds some mass, which causes the density to increase. And if we have a density that is greater than one, it's going to sink in the water. If we have a density that is less than one, it will float. And it turns out that sodas that have a lot of sugar have a really, really high density. All that sugar going into your system, we can see that right here. Okay? But diet sodas or sodas that are sugar-free will float. So let's try this with some other sodas in our rainbow that we've got here for Pride. Let's see, we've got Sprite. Sprite has 38 grams of sugar. Do you think it will sink or it will float? Cheer if you think it will sink. Yeah. Now cheer if you think it will float. Let's wow, test it smart. out. Lots of sugar in that Sprite. Sink straight to the bottom. Let's try another one. Some of us are fancy in here. We like this La Croix. La Croix. We've got lemon flavor here. It looks like it has zero sugar in it. That's one of the features of LaCroix. Cheer if you think it will sink. Cheer if you think it will float. <laughs> Let's test it out. Oops. Oh, floats a little. Oh, there it is. Yep, Slowly yep, making yep, its yep. way up. And it looks like it does, in fact, float. We'll try one more. Coke, zero. It literally says zero sugar right there. Cheer if you think it will sink. Cheer if you think it will float. Yeah. Let's test it out. 
It does indeed float. That density is less than one. Hey, Jared, what are we going to do with all these cans now for our birthday party? Well, you know, I've been to birthday parties and had the same experience. I, you know, always want the ones at the bottom. But one way or the other, I drink all the soda and I got a bunch of empty cans. And so what are we going to do with our empty cans, folks? Uh, see, you know, yeah, we recycle them, obviously, but they take up a lot of room, you know, that's a big can there. So you got to find some way, you got to find some way to take up less room. How are you going to do that? How do you do it? Oh, yeah, you step on it, you crush it. It takes a lot of energy, though, right? It takes a lot of energy. Um, hmm. am, I, am I getting any? Today, instead of using my body energy, I'm gonna use science to crush these cans. Hmm. And I don't just mean like, boy, that's my body systems crushing the can. Look at that science. Now I'm gonna use a little, uh, use a little physics to do this. Now I'm a little worried because I'm not seeing what I need to yet. Um, what are we supposed to see so far? I don't know. I, I thought there was supposed to be some, uh, some steam, maybe? Hmm, maybe a little less water, there we go. Oh, you know, uh, my, my teacher here, Lori, would be really upset if I wasn't uh, donning my protective gear here. Uh, not that dangerous, but. Give it up for safety protection! Mm -hmm. While we're waiting for these cans to heat up a little bit, kids, if you are at home and you have some water and some soda cans that you wanna try this with too, make a prediction, what do you think will happen? Look at the soda, or look at the sugar amount that's listed on those nutrition facts. It's probably gonna be a pretty high number. There's a lot of sugar, okay? 35 grams just in one can of soda. And you can actually test to see whether it's going to sink or float. Make that prediction, see if you're correct. So I have a little bit of water in these, uh, in these cans. You saw me pour a little bit out. Uh, what happens when you heat up water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is steam exactly? Hot air, hmm. evaporation, yeah. It's, so you're taking this, this liquid water and you're getting the molecules all excited. Now right now, that water, it's just sitting at the bottom, just kind of, but it's getting hot, it's getting hot, and I, it's not getting as hot as I thought it would, as fast as I thought it would, so. Um, <laughs> and, and it's getting excited, and you ever seen those things outside the used car lot, and they're like, ooh, right? <laughs> That's what's going on with these molecules in there. They're coming around and they're bouncing all around. Now. Inside this can, is there air too? Yeah, but that air, just this kind of air, it's getting kind of pushed out by these flying molecules. They're bumping them on out of there. And so there's equal air pressure on the outside and the inside. Can they see the next one? Toss that one there. All right. There we go, there we go. So we're adding heat. You can see our little blue molecules bouncing around and hopping up and down, and uh, they're pushing out most of the air. But again, it's open. So if it's closed, We'd have a pressurized system like this. I can't, can't crush it. But it's open, so there's not any pressure building up. Now, let's not show them that last one. Let's see, are we getting any steam here? Okay. okay. Can we get, a, oh, yeah, can we get a, a zoom in right over here? Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can see that steam coming out of, out of this one right here or this one. Can you see any steam coming out up there? See those air molecules, or those water molecules jetting out of there? It's hard to see, but I guarantee you it's happening. So. Here's the moment, here's the moment I've been waiting for and I hope you have been too. So I'm gonna use some science to crush this can. Oh, oh, you're right, absolutely. See, they are the experts. I'm gonna switch glasses just cause they're cooler. Stay safe, right. kids. Stay safe, safety first. All right, ready? Good thing I have a spare. Good thing oh, I have a spare. What do we think about another experiment, folks? Yes, we can try it again, Jared. When in doubt, always prep twice. All right, come on, audience. What do you think? Give them some love. Oh. So close. Oh. There goes our win. What did we expect to happen? What do you think you expected to happen? It, so why would it have crushed had it worked perfectly? Well, why don't you tell us, Jared? Well, let's take a look. Oh, so when I flip it back over, you guys ever seen dew in the morning, rainfall from the sky? Water cycle, right? So those excited molecules, they get 
chilled back out by that chilled water. You'll notice there's some ice in here. And the amazing thing is then, is there any other molecules hanging around up in here? Not really, I've emptied the can. Now there's a ton of pressure from the outside and not much from the inside. And that's what should have crushed the can. All right, give them some love, folks, yay! Thank you. <laughs> I love birthday parties, and so whatever it is that you're drinking, whether it sinks or whether it floats, and you, however you however decide you to crush it. your can, you can and recycle. recycle. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tori and Jared. Give it up for an experiment that didn't go quite right, but they're going to continue to do it again, aren't we, folks? Yes. Don't, Don't maybe do this at home. Probably don't do this at home. Ask your science teacher. Maybe he'll get it right. He or she will totally oh, get it right. Hey. Yes. One more round of applause, please, for Jared and Tori. All right. Let's give it up for our third contestant, all the way from Oakland, but born and raised in India. It's Ajanta Day. Happy birthday, Exploratorium. Everyone sugar high now? Yeah, yeah? <laughs> okay. It's time to relax. It's Friday. You are in an awesome place, Exploratorium by the bay. So what I want you to do is deep breath with me a couple times, okay? Let's do that. Count of three. One more time. Good job, good job. So, aside our nostrils, who's taking the air in? You know who are the main players here? They are our lungs, right here. And a muscle. It's a very thin muscle right below our lungs. It separates our chest cavity with our abdomen. So here I have for you some breathtaking signs <laughs> with whatever I could get from a birthday party. OK, so before I explain this with the model I have made, when we are breathing in, the diaphragm is doing the work by continuously moving. This muscle here contracting means there is more space in the chest cavity. High volume. High volume is low pressure. Air goes from high to low pressure. So when the diaphragm is contracting, more area, air goes in. That's inspiration or inhalation what an inspiring story isn't it okay so then goes the next one exhaling so when the diaphragm is coming up chest cavity has less space less volume and is pushing the air out because there is more pressure inside the lungs okay ready 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 with my very green lungs here, right? What happens? Diaphragm, the yellow balloon goes down, contracting. And Ooh, the balloon fills up. Wow. What's the balloon? The lungs fills up. We keep breathing. Oh. We keep breathing. So let our lungs be the center of our birthday party today. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. 
Appreciate Thank you, Ajanta, for letting us know how to use our birthday party supplies to show us how to inhale with our lungs. Th one more round, please, for Ajanta. Great. All right, next up we have San Diego, a Padre fan, but she still loves San Francisco. It's Megan Zeeler. Hello there. Well, hi, folks. Thanks for joining us today to celebrate the Exploratorium's 50th birthday. I was noticing in that pile of goodness, party goodness, that there was a cupcake. And I thought to myself, as a biologist, I love the human body. What does our body do with a cupcake? And I thought we should do a model of digestion. So here's my cupcake. Here's what we're going to start with. Cool fact. Digestion starts before you ever eat anything. When you smell a delicious cupcake, saliva starts to form in your mouth. Saliva is a mixture of water and enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that speed up chemical reactions. So we're going to eat our cupcake today. You'll notice that there's a little bit of liquid in here because guess what's in your mouth before you eat? Saliva. Gross. All right. The mechanical part of digestion happens with our teeth. Give me a smile. Oh, look at those pearly whites. Hello, everyone. So we've got some teeth that are taking a big old bite out of our cupcake. OK, and our teeth in the front are kind of like little chompers. And the teeth in the back are going to kind of grind things up. So my fingers right now are being the front teeth. And then I'm going to start to move to the back of my teeth, the back of my mouth. I'm going to give this a little mush. I'm going to give it a little mush. Because when we eat something, we don't swallow it right away. And there's a reason for that. So I got a little mush going on, a little mush, a little mush. But when we eat something, we don't completely mush it down. Sometimes you can kind of feel parts of the food in your mouth. We continue to mush. This cupcake is made out of some flour, some sugar, some butter. It's got some eggs. And so there's a variety of macromolecules in this food. Macromolecules are the things that our body use to grow, develop, function. But we can't take macromolecules and just do something with them. Before we can get to the energy, to the vitamins and the nutrients that are in those macromolecules, we have to do some chemistry. All right, I'm almost done chewing my cupcake here. The next step on our adventure is the esophagus. The esophagus is a little tube. It's not very little, actually. It's thin in diameter, but it's long. It goes from your mouth to your stomach. This food is kind of thick. So your body uses something called peristalsis. It's a muscle contraction that literally pushes the food down into your stomach. So my hands right now are representing peristalsis. Ew. All right, here I am in the stomach. You'll notice that there's some stuff in the stomach. What kinds of things are always in your stomach? Yeah, acid. Acid, there is stomach acid. You'll also notice that my snack from earlier today is still kind of hanging out in there. The acid helps to continue to break down those macromolecules. Gross, but cool, because it's science. <laughs> Doesn't look like a cupcake. Doesn't look like a snack. Oh, hold that thought. All right, so your stomach contracts. It's a muscle, and that contraction helps to move the food stuff around. At this point, we're calling it chyme. Chyme is the name of the food stuff. It's no longer a cupcake. Now we call it chyme. OK, next step. I think this is the coolest organ in the whole body. Small intestine. OK, small intestine. Super rad. Small intestine is in charge of absorption. So oh, all this goodness that we're trying to get out of this food, I'm going to eat a bowl. All this goodness we're trying to get out of this food is going to be absorbed by the small intestine. And the, in this model here, the part of the small intestine I want you to focus on is this tube. All right, one of the things we need to add to the small intestine is some bile. Bile helps to emulsify lipids, break down fatty particles. 
So we're gonna add a little bit of bile. We know that soap breaks down fat molecules. That's why we use soap when we do dishes. We're gonna close off the top of the, ooh, got a little backlog there. We're gonna close off the top of the small intestine. We're gonna let it kind of hang out here because absorption takes a while. It's not an immediate process. And as we move the food through peristalsis down the small intestine, eventually we're gonna get to the large intestine. Uh-oh. All right, large intestine, last step. Now you've absorbed the carbohydrates, the minerals, the lipids, the proteins from the small intestine, in the small intestine. Those are gonna go into your bloodstream and they'll be sent to cells and they're gonna just help your body to grow and function. Here's what's left. So the large intestine is responsible for getting the water out of the leftovers. Your body has to do something with the leftovers, right? There's leftover stuff that your body didn't use. And so as it moves down the large intestine, water is being absorbed by your body. If I haven't lost you now, just wait. Give it up for this large intestine, people. <laughs> Woo, a large intestine. All right, we're almost to the end of the large intestine. And if you've ever lived for more than one day, you know what happens. <laughs> we call it a lot of things in science. Waste, stool, feces, scat, but what we most frequently call it is poop. Once this large mass of extra cupcake and snack reaches the end of the large intestine, it hits the end of the large intestine. That re region is called the anus or the rectum. We can say it, it's science, it's okay. And that's gonna trigger a little commute to the loo. So here we are, on the count of three, I need a countdown. Three, two, one. do with a cupcake and mechanically breaks it apart it chemically breaks down the macromolecules it absorbs the vitamins the minerals the fats the lipids the carbohydrates and the proteins that your body needs to function then it has a super cool system to take off the water that your body then can recycle and reuse and it makes poop thank you all right This is the first time in the webcast studio that we've had someone poop. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. Round of applause, please, for Megan. Um, just to let you know, we're having a sale on cupcakes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Seriously, we have a sale on cupcakes at the Sea Glass Restaurant. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, are you ready for our fifth and final contestant of 2019? Uh, woo! Uh, uh, I will let you know that I am not hungry. It's one thing that's happening. We're also prepping because we want to make sure that we are safe over here uh, because Kendrick is not only using goggles, but he's using some ingredients that we don't want you to use at home. But feel free to use cupcakes at home as much as you'd like. Totally natural process. Um, and let's give it up, please, for Kendrick Chow representing San Francisco. Woo! San Francisco. All right. How many of you guys love chemistry? There we go. There we go. Well, when I first thought of birthdays, I thought, hmm, what's a birthday without bubbles, you know? Just, whoop, that didn't work out. Oh, no. 
Let's try that again with this bear. Right? Yay! If you're a kid and you love bubbles, can I hear you scream a little bit? If you're, Yay! If you're an adult who loves bubbles at birthday parties, can I hear you scream a little bit? Yay! All right, so today, when I was thinking about bubbles, I thought, mm, where do bubbles come from? And I thought about when I was a kid and I got a cut on my hand, I know my mom would pour a little bit of hydrogen peroxide that you can get from the pharmacy, and that would disinfect my cut, and a couple bubbles would come out, right? And what hydrogen peroxide is, it really, 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 really wants to become water and oxygen. So those bubbles that were coming out of my hand was actually just oxygen. And I poured a little bit in here with a little bit of red in there, and I'm gonna mix it with something called a catalyst, this fine black powder right here. And what a catalyst does is it helps speed up the reaction. It makes things happen a lot faster. Oh, that's right. That's right, safety. Safety. And I even have a pair for Ron, our cameraman. I just totally forgot about Give it up own. for Ron, our cameraman! <laughs> right, I'm gonna add a little bit more. And tell me if you can see the bubbles that are happening when I pour this in. And tell me what else you notice as I pour this powder in. What happened? Steam, right? Steaming just like the cans at first. There was some steam. What else? Bubbles, Bubbles right? That tells us that there is a chemical reaction happening. And actually, if I touch this, it's a little bit, just a tiny bit warmer. Turn black. That's the powder right here, the catalyst, right? But to better see this reaction happening, we went to a science supply store, very scientist, a scientist quality hydrogen peroxide. This is 10 times stronger. What do you think will happen if it's 10 times stronger? Bigger. Bigger. We're also going to use a little bit of soap, just like the soap, the bile. It helps make a surface and clean up the fat a little bit. We're going to add this to the, or actually I added some already. We're going to add some of this hydrogen peroxide. Now, reminder, don't do this at home. And always have your goggles on. But I'm going to add some of this peroxide in to start just a tiny bit. But remember the catalyst I said? The catalyst actually helps with the reaction, but it doesn't get used up. So we're going to prove that it doesn't get used up by actually adding it back into this one. And we'll see what happens when this gets added back into there. Let's see. What's going on? Bubbles. Let's see, I'm gonna add a little bit more to this one. This one I filled with blue. And I'm just gonna add the catalyst straight into there this time because that had a little bit of water distracting the reaction from happening. We're gonna add a tiny bit more. What do we think? If I add more peroxide, what'll happen? More extra bubbles, right? Let's see if this will happen for us. Three, two, one. Oh, look at the other one. Let's see what happens as it builds up and reacts for us. Ooh, let's see if it'll keep, I think it'll keep going, but we'll watch it as it happens, but that will be my demo for today. Reminder, don't do this at home, and the catalyst always speeds up your reaction, so please be careful. All right, give it up for Kendrick. Can we also give it up, please, for the hydrogen peroxide and the catalyst? <laughs> Fabulous. Folks, did you have fun so far? Okay, are you going to be able to help me vote? This was a tough competition. We're vying for the crown of Iron Science Teacher for 2019. Are you ready to help start voting? Okay, let's bring them out and remind them what they did. First out is Tori and Jared. Awesome. They showed us two different relationships, not only how density can cause things to sink or float, but also the relationship between pressure and temperature. All right, big round of applause for them.
All right, come on out, Ajanta Day! Ajanta told us how we could take our birthday party supplies and take a deep breath. And of course, appreciate the complex process of breathing. Round of applause, please! Give it up for Megan Ziegler! <laughs> Megan scared the you-know-what out of us. <laughs> and taught us and reminded us how digestion <laughs> is a wonderful process. <laughs> and <laughs> eat, eat your cupcakes. Okay. <laughs> Last but not least is Kendrick Chow! <laughs> Kendrick showed us how he can, we can use bubbles and hydrogen peroxide and a catalyst to speed up um, its creation into hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, round of applause for all five, please. <laughs> all right, to be scientific, I have a sound level meter here. Well, yeah, tell me more. Oh. Um, Do you want to hold it? Do you want to hold it? No, I'm good. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, does anyone else want to hold it? Okay, here we go. Okay, okay, here we go. All right, right there. Now point this this way. Okay, so what's your name? Diana. Diana has the sound level meter in decibels. She is going to help us determine scientifically who is the loudest or who receives the loudest cheers based on your applause, stomping, cheering, and yelling. All right, audience, are you ready? Oh, you just hold, yeah, you just hold on to it just like that, and you tell me where the red, where the red thing goes to, the number, okay? Can you do that? I believe in you. Okay. All right. Round of applause if you think that Tori and Jared should be the winners. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's, no, that's good. That's really good. You did a fabulous job. Okay. Audience, you need to do a better job because Diana is not having a hard time here. Okay, audience, let's bring it. What do you think for Ajanta Day? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's keep it going. How about Megan Ziegler? Yeah, it couldn't go any farther, could it? Yeah, nice. All right, and Kendrick Chow. What do you think? It went all the way over. It went all the way over. Wait, who's the winner? You think Kendrick, what about Megan? Uh, second place. Was it a tie? She was second place? Are you sure it wasn't a tie? Yeah, yeah, it's a tie. You think it's a tie? Yeah. Okay, it's a tie between Megan and Kendrick. Yes. Nice job. All right, round of applause, please, for all these teachers. Thanks for joining us here in San Francisco and for the Iron Science Teacher 2019 competition. This is our last competition of 2019. Oh, but feel free to watch this online because this is now forever online and on Facebook, which is fabulous. Um, have a wonderful Friday and happy Pride, everyone. Take care.